takes the volume and the shape of its container, all right? Air blows in and out of rooms and things like that, okay? We, we don't have much control over the shape of gases. So here's a nice little review. Uh, there'll be a question about solids, liquids, and gases on the test. There'll be three questions. Make sure you look at this. As far as kinetic theory, what I really want you to know is that gas has the most energy. Solids have the least amount of energy. Liquids have a little bit more energy. Gases have the most energy. You do need to know that both liquids and gases flow. The molecules slide past one another. Here's a stream on the test. It's gonna be a picture of a waterfall. A gases flow just like liquids, we just can't see it, but we can feel it. It's called the wind or a breeze. That's flowing gas. It's flowing atmosphere in the air, which is a gas. So here again, make sure you know the states of matter, gases have the most energy. All right. A density. All you need to know is density refers to how tightly packed together the particles are. This is low density, medium density, high density. The more tightly packed together things are, the more dense they are. Volume is just the amount of space something takes up. That's volume. There will be a question on viscosity on the test, how easily something flows. Water flows very easily. It's a low viscosity. If it flows real slowly like this liquid here, it has a high viscosity. So there will be a question about viscosity. You'll see this picture. Conductivity is things that conduct heat and electricity. Things that allow heat and electricity to go through them. Uh, you need to know that metals have high conductivity and are good conductors. And that's explained by metallic bonding, which we'll talk about in a minute. We cook in metal pans because they let the heat go to the food real fast. Now, octet rule. You don't need to know the name octet rule. You need to know what it means. Atoms want eight electrons in their outer shell. Atoms want eight valence electrons with a couple of exceptions. But out of the 114 elements, 110 of them want eight valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Valence electrons, we're gonna talk about a lot this semester because they're important because it's the valence electrons that interact with other atoms. Like these people are interacting with other people and they're involved in bonding. These people will form friendships and a friendship is like a bond between two atoms. Now we are gonna talk about ionic and covalent bonding. Ionic bonding is when an electron literally is passed from one atom to another. This electron goes from the sodium to the chlorine and that's called an ionic bond. When an electron is given away, it gives an electron. Uh, the, I, Pay attention to this slide. I like this cartoon. The sodium gives an electron to a chlorine. Then they have opposite charges and they're attracted to each other and they're bonded. They become a couple. Okay, the sodium is supposed to be a girl and the chlorine is supposed to be a boy. And at the end, because now they have opposite charges, they're attracted to each other. But the electron originally started out with the sodium. In the end, it's with the, chlor it's with the chlorine. Covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons. Co means share, valent means valence electrons. It's the sharing of electrons. That forms a covalent bond. Here is a covalent bonding. They're sharing the blanket. Now, the sharing is not always equal. Here we see Sarah has more of the blanket than Emily. And that's called a polar covalent bond. So in a polar covalent bond, 
In this case, we'll look at water molecules. So in this class, we're only gonna look at water molecules for this. Oxygen has a slight negative charge, a small negative charge, and hydrogen has a slight or small positive charge because these electrons spend more time with the oxygen than they do the hydrogen. Okay, that's why we have these arrows pointing toward the oxygen. Why is this important? Well, this slight negative charge and this slight positive charge are attracted to each other. That's called a hydrogen bond because hydrogen's involved. It's called a hydrogen bond. Why is this important? It explains the properties of water. Me, you, everyone we know, we all need water. We are 60% water. So water is very important to us. So it's very important to know that water molecules have these hydrogen bonds, all right? Now, all the elements of a group or a family have similar physical and chemical properties because they have the same number of valence electrons. I've been told all my kids and all my grandkids have my nose. We've all got the same nose, so that's our, our similar physical property. All right. So in, in this gr each group of the representative elements, remember we're skipping the transition metals in this class. They all are in the same family. They're all in the same group. They have the same number of valence electrons. This carbon has four valence electrons, but all the elements in this group have four valence electrons. All these have two valence electrons. That's why they're in the same family and the same group. Now in a Lewis dot structure, each of these dots represents a valence electron. Notice valence electrons come up a lot because they're important. Okay, this is an oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. We know oxygen has six valence electrons. Uh, as far as the properties of metals and nonmetals, I'm only gonna test you over two of them, okay? And I'll, I'll go over that in a minute, which ones I'll test you over. But we do need to know why metals have the properties they do. So metals, they don't want their valence electrons. They want to get rid of them so they can have eight in the outer shell. Well, metals only have one or two electrons in their outer shell, so they want to get rid of them. So these electrons are free to move around. And this attraction between this metal and these electrons is very strong. Look at downtown Dallas. Those big, huge buildings are made out of metal because metals are very strong. This attraction is very strong. And this is known as metallic bonding or a free sea of electrons. Why? The electrons can move where they want. That's called metallic bonding. Okay. Why is it important that electrons can move that they want? Well, one, we've already talked about metals conduct heat and electricity very well because these electrons can move around. Okay. The moving electrons make metals good conductors of heat and electricity. But also this makes metals malleable. I know that's a funny word. We don't use it in our daily lives. Malleable means you can bend something into shapes. Because these electrons are free to move around, you hit it hard enough, the metal bends because the electrons move. Okay? That's called malleable, be formed into shapes. Metals can also be made into wires, which is important. That's why we have electricity in our homes. That's why we can have lights in our homes. That's why we can power up our cell phones and our laptops and all those things we enjoy using in our life. And to be able to make something into a wire is called ductile. Ductile is being able to make something into a wire. All right, that sums up what you need to know for the test. Remember that review. Once you answer it, you can go back and look at it. And it not only tells you the ones you got wrong, it tells you what the correct answer is. Okay, and you can use that to study for the test. Uh, remember, you need to do this review assignment and we'll be testing later in the week.